I didn't really mean for it to happen, but it happened anyway. I got a new Jeep project. It's a 91 YJ with the 4.0. It's the automatic. Uh, it's, I know a lot of people don't really care for YJs or they, you know, they don't really like them that much because they're not that capable or they don't ride as well or they got square headlights or whatever, but YJs have a special place in my heart. My first Jeep was a YJ. The first Jeep I ever rode in or drove was a YJ. So uh, my first one was a 2.5 though, so it was pretty slow. This one's pretty slow too, but it's you know it's got power to get out of its own way even with the auto. Uh, it's got 31s on it already on some slightly rusty American racing wheels. Um, these are the original uh, BFG KOs, so they're. A little old, but they look brand new still, so I'm definitely going to keep running with them. It's got a bunch of chrome stuff tacked all over it. One of the first things I want to do is definitely get rid of that chrome sidebar that does nothing. Uh, paint's in pretty pretty bad shape, but I like that. I think it looks cool. It's got that old Jeep patina look to it. Smitty Belt winch with a Smitty Belt front bumper, and this is kind of cool. The previous owner, instead of having the solenoid, you know, the box on top of the uh, winch itself, he put it under the hood and put a little plug in for the winch controller right here in the grill. So, a little more room for air to get in the radiator. This keeps that solenoid out of the weather and tucked up away. It's pretty nice. It's got the extended flares on it, which I do not like. I really want to get rid of those too. Put the stock ones back on for now. Antenna ball. Uh, he gave me a bunch of extra parts. Here's the rear seat and seat belts. It currently has a uh, I guess a custom built rear cargo storage area. So I'll probably pull out that storage area and put the seat back in it um, just because I want to be able to take everybody out, drive around. It's got a Smitty Belt rear bumper with tire carrier, and <laughs> this is the original spare from 1991. So that's got to go. A lot of stickers, which I find pretty funny. I'm probably just going to leave them on just because I think they're funny. So it is a hard top with the full doors. He also gave me two soft tops and a set of half doors. Um, two sets of soft uppers for the half doors. And at least one bikini top. I think I have two. I don't know if the other one's going to fit. Um, but I definitely got at least one. The inside's pretty much what you would expect with a 30 year old Jeep. It does have replace, um, it has replacement best top seats that are in pretty good shape. So that's nice. It's got a sound bar up top with Alpine speakers in it. It's The steering wheel's been replaced. I don't like this steering wheel. I think it's too close to me and I think it's too small. I'd like to put the stock one back on if I can get one. Uh, it still has the carpet in it. You can see it's pretty dark in here. There we go, that's better. It's still got the original carpet in it, um, which is in okay shape. I'll, I, eventually, I want to just rip all the carpet out of the inside and replace it, uh, or just, just Monster Line or Herculine or whatever, some type of bed liner. Um, the full interior, I'd like to do the full interior in black, and I'd like to do the full exterior in red. Again, that's not something that's going to happen today or tomorrow or anytime soon, but that's the current plan as of now. It's pretty dirty as you can see. It also has a locking center console with cup holders, which is great. Uh, let's see, it's got 186,000 miles on it. Uh, apparently the engine was rebuilt 10,000 miles ago. I have no way to verify that, obviously. It's just what the previous owner told me. He is my neighbor. So I have no reason to doubt him, uh, but it does make some kind of funky noises when it runs. Uh, I'm kind of worried that it might have some piston slap, but he's he told me it's been doing that since he rebuilt it, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's not like I'm going to be driving this out in the middle of nowhere by myself. It does have some type of lift underneath. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's pretty old. Uh, the bushings look yellow. They're very corroded and very old, but they look yellow, which may be their old man emu springs. I don't know. There's no labels on them anywhere that I can see. And uh, like I said, they've been there 
they've been there for quite a while. So um, it's still got the track bars, which I will be removing. Track bars on a leaf spring vehicle. Uh, I'm just not about that. So that'll get going. I'll probably ditch the front sway bar too. It did pass smog today, which was totally shocking. So I'm ready to go get my plates for it. I've got everything else, insurance, title, everything else is in my name, ready to go. Just got to go get the actual plate. Eventually, I think I'd like to put this on 35s um, and keep the stock wheelbase. Maybe do some metal cloak fenders or something like that to keep the lift low so it still rides pretty good. I'd also like to do a one inch body lift, one inch motor mount lift, and a belly up skid pan. Because um, of right now, it's got the drop kit, which makes sense because it's lifted. But I'd like to completely change that out for a slip yoke eliminator and obviously change the rear axle to an 8.8 .8 or something like that. Maybe WJ knuckles to go in the front, bigger disc brakes in the front, add disc brakes in the rear with 35s and either 456 or 488 gears, whatever makes sense. Um, but again, that's long term. Short term, I think I want to throw in a Spartan locker in the front, put some whatever kind of cheap uh, rock rails on it, get rid of that stupid step as I said, put some rock rails on it just so the sides are a little bit more protected get a spare that's actually worth carrying and basically just drive it at that point. I just want to enjoy it like this because I know as soon as I lift it and do a bunch of work to it I'm gonna wanna or I'm gonna wish that I had kept it stock or at least smaller for a little bit longer. That's what always seems to happen to me but but yeah this is what I'm working with now We'll get those side steps off, get the interior cleaned out. He gave me a lot of junk, basically, a lot of trash that's still in there. Um, get that cleaned out and take it out to the desert. Maybe get the track bars off, too. One thing I forgot to add is that this Jeep has been in Nevada its entire life, and it's been outside its entire life, judging by the paint, but it is completely 100% rust-free. There is no rust anywhere that I can find. It has what looks like just typical surface rust which isn't even like real rust in my opinion it just looks dirty but <clears throat> it's completely solid the frame is completely solid the motor is completely dry actually let's take a look at the motor there it is the 4.0 finally got a 4 liter Wrangler so the motor is completely dry uh, it may have a slight rear main seal leak because it looks like the back of it's a little wet but up top he wasn't kidding about you know whether or not he rebuilt it which I'm sure he did um, it's sealed up really well you can see he wrote the mileage right there there's the mileage that was on the odometer when he rebuilt it so that's about 8,000 between 8 and 10,000 miles ago something like that it does have this cold air intake which I don't like I want to put the stock air box back on um, Nothing filters better than the stock airbox, and we live in a very dusty area. I'm glad I took those off. They are just nothing but rust inside of them. <sighs> Trash.
I took this fender off to have better access to those bolts on the back of that side step. And, you know, I'm kind of tempted to leave it like this. I think it looks pretty cool. I didn't realize those fenders required trimming, so this tub is all chopped up, which sucks. Definitely not what I would have done, but whatever. Well, I was spraying all the suspension bolts and I noticed this rear leaf spring bushing is completely gone, so add that to the list. I also noticed that the rear track bar is gone. There's the bolt hole for the frame side. And the axle side, the axle side has been like ripped off. So I'm not sure what happened there, but I'm gonna get the front off, even it out. I notice it still has the splash shield under the engine too, which I didn't even know YJ's came with that. I knew XJ's did, and people just trash them. So, it's pretty interesting. That's gonna go too though. Okay, it's day two. I think I might spend the day just trying to clean these wheels up a little. You can see I took some scotch Bright and kinda went over that got rid of the rust and just cloudiness that was there. So I might go around with this or I might give this a shot with one of these on it. So I don't know, we'll see. I'll try both.
All right, it's day three, YJ project. I found this in my shed. I think I'm gonna try to tone down some of the stainless on the hood here. I think I'll start with that, try to paint that, and maybe these hinges. If it looks good, I might do the headlight surrounds and the door hinges, but take them off, go over with this a little bit, see what I can do, spray them up, and they're gonna look worse. I'm trying to paint today, so naturally this is the one day a year it rains in Nevada.
think I'm going to end this video here. Um, I've had it for about three weeks now, working on and on and off, and I've definitely got a ton of stuff done. Obviously, I've got a long way to go. Uh, I still plan on getting 35s eventually, but it just sits so right and looks so good with the factory flares. Two and a half inches and 31s that I'm not in a rush for that. I'm going to start collecting parts for um, an 8.8 .8 swap in the rear. And I've already started collecting a few parts. Started collecting a few parts for uh, the front end. I'm going to stick with the 30 and build it up a little bit. I'm going to do a one piece axle on the passenger side. A one piece axle shaft on the uh, passenger side. Um, I think 10 Factory, it's either 10 Factory or Yukon, somebody, maybe both. Uh, they do a, uh, a chromoly kit for the front of the YJ that comes with uh, both axle shafts and the block off plate and everything for the vacuum disconnect. So I'll probably just do something like that in one shot. This has the older U joints, the 260s or whatever they are, the smaller U joints since it's a 91. So a good upgrade for this too would just be the axle shafts from a 95 or later um, Wrangler or Cherokee. Um, the, you, you get the one piece axle shaft and you get bigger U-joints. So that will be a good budget upgrade. Since I'm going to be doing 35s, I'm just going to go straight to Cromali's though. I was looking for a spare uh, that would match these, but since these wheels are not made anymore, these are American racing wheels, and they don't make this style anymore apparently, or if they do, I can't find them. And this version of the BFG All Terrains, the original KOs, those aren't made anymore either. So I couldn't really find a spare or a good way to match it uh, cheaply. And since I'm going to get 35s, it doesn't make sense to buy a new 31. So I'm just going to get a, uh, a spare tire cover and throw it on the back just to make it look a little better. I will say the sport cage love it looks awesome i think it looks so much just more classic i guess is the word i don't really know uh how to describe it i guess but compared to the family roll bar that my first yj had um i just think this this just fits it so much better i think it just looks so much cooler in my opinion i did throw the half doors on it since i've got a full set of half doors full doors everything else so when i took the top off through the uh, half doors on it <laughs> it's just so nostalgic because this is what it, this is exactly how i used to roll in my yj in college man it's just i don't know the paddle the paddle door handle the noise it makes when it opens it's just it's just awesome it brings back a lot of really good memories of my first jeep also threw the rear seat in getting ready to you know, cruise around with everybody. Um, I, I did get the seat and the seat belts and everything from the guy I bought it from, so that went in. He had glued the hard top on, um, so that was a little bit of an effort to get that off. I had to kind of pry it off with a 2x4 and a jack, but I did get it off, so that's, uh, you know, we're good to go. Um, I probably won't ever put a soft top on it. I would like to put a bikini top on it, just if we take it to the lake or whatever and you know, sit out there all day. We'll have some shade to come back to when we're ready to leave. Uh, the brakes need major attention. It's borderline dangerous how bad the brakes are right now. So whenever I do the front end, uh, I really want to get these uh, WJ calipers put on. So yeah, the front end is going to get uh, the chromoly axle shafts with the one piece on the passenger side, the WJ knuckles and brakes with crossover steering, not sure exactly how I'm going to do the crossover steering yet, if I'm just going to run factory parts or if I'm going to upgrade to a beefier tie rod. Um, still thinking about what I want to do there. Uh, the main thing is just getting them brakes on. I hope they fit with these wheels. If they don't, uh, maybe I'll try to grind them down a little bit. I'm not sure. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But oh, I can't really tell uh, a difference with the track bar gone. I never ran track bars when I lifted my... Uh, previous YJ and as long as you drive it knowing that it's a Jeep it doesn't really matter definitely doesn't need them I think I'm going to disconnect the front sway bar too and just leave it disconnected I was looking at some uh, JKS disconnects but 
quite honestly, I just don't think they're they're worth $114. So I'm probably just going to unbolt the factory sway bar and strap it out of the way somewhere. And if I ever need to put it back on, I'll just I'll just bolt it back on. It's not that big a deal. So yeah, build up the Dana 30 a little bit. 488 gears, Ford 8.8 in the rear with disc brakes, 488 gears, and I definitely want to get a slip yoke eliminator because this transfer case drop is ridiculous. I do have a couple of drips of oil coming somewhere around the pan. I can't tell if it's from the front or if it's from the back. Uh, the whole thing seems a little wet, so um, I'll pull that down at some point and reseal it. I'm starting to think, too, that the noise the engine is making is the timing chain. It sounds like it might be slapping a little bit. I've seen a few other videos when I was trying to figure out what the noise was. Uh, the timing chain uh, looks like it could be an issue. It still runs perfectly fine. It just makes that noise and it's weird. So I want to get it fixed. Especially before we trailer this thing out to Moab. That's another thing too that we're definitely going to be hitting Moab next year for Easter Jeep Safari I think. Uh, if we don't make it to EJS we'll definitely make it to Moab at some point one way or another. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it'll be ready by then. We're supposed to do the well, there's talk about us doing the Rubicon this year uh, in September. Don't think that's going to happen, at least not with this Jeep. Uh, so we'll see. But I'm going to end the video here, I think. It's gone on pretty long, but like I said, i got a lot more stuff that I want to do to it, and I'll probably make videos for those too. So thanks for watching.